I'm back with another Eliza dress. This is the Winter's Ball Gown from Hamilton Act One. It's the dress Eliza wears to the Winter's Ball as well as to her wedding. Much of what I'm gonna talk about in this video literally builds upon the last dress, which is the Eliza Schuyler Sisters dress. So I highly recommend you check that video out, especially if you wanna see how I made the underpinnings. After staring at these dresses so intensely that I noticed little nuances like the sometimes visibly top-stitched hem and the sometimes not visibly top-stitched hem and the sometimes bias tape, sometimes not bias taped bodice, I found one truly useful hint about the construction of the winter's ball gown, and that is that the entire dress, save for the belt, is constructed in one single piece. You can see it most clearly in this picture with designer Paul Taswell that the winter's ball bodice and cut-on skirt exist as one connected piece that itself sits over the existing Skylar Sisters base skirt. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to be referring to the Skylar Sisters bodice and skirt, especially as the base. Now that we know that information, let's dive right into building on top the Skylar Sisters skirt skirt and underpinnings. Finding a fabric match for this skirt was much easier than the last project, probably because I had already amassed so many aquamarine silk taffeta swatches. The show's dress is iridescent, but instead of having a gold sheen like the base dress, the winter's ball ball gown has a soft white glow to it. The fabric I needed for this project was another iridescent silk taffeta, this time with aquamarine threads crossed with white threads. I went with this beautiful silk taffeta from Renaissance Fabrics. The silk is of a noticeably lighter weight than the base fabric. Boy, you got me helpless. Look into your eyes, and the sky's the limit. So, for the bodice. It was important to me that the zone front looked as perfectly smooth as possible. For this reason, I stuck in an additional 13 inch bone right down the center front. <laughs> The construction of this bodice is almost identical to the construction of the Skylar Sisters bodice. Here are all the back pieces of the bodice before I sew them together. My biggest issue with this original bodice is that it sits weirdly atop the bum roll, which pushes everything up, making it very uncomfortable where the two come into contact. So I raised the bottom of the bodice to try to avoid friction, but spoiler alert, it was still not enough. I was optimistic that this would be easier to make since I wouldn't have to engineer that asymmetrical front, but the tediousness of matching up the zone front to look symmetrical took just about as much time. This dress also has a false front opening right down the center front, which was extremely annoying to make because in retrospect, I made it completely inefficiently. I cut two matching half bodice fronts with a little extra seam allowance on one side, then I pressed and folded over about a centimeter of the fabric and sewed it down. <laughs> is the fabric that sticks up, creating the illusion of the false front when both bodice pieces are sewn together. Immediately after finishing this step, I realized that I could have skipped the two bodices part and made a single bodice, added in the extra seam allowance, and then did the press and sew thing, and I wouldn't have had to match the two sides. So, awesome, wow. As with the original bodice, this one buckles over top the bum roll in the back, something that would be fixed by adding bones to the back of the dress. At that point, it's probably easier to simply bone the entire bodice than to wear stays. Sewing a single set of stays for myself as opposed to heavily boning every single 18th century bodice I make would be more practical. Awesome, wow. Um, Maybe, maybe that's why the show doesn't have their actresses all wear a pair of stays. The three layers of fabric of the bodice on top the two layers of fabric of the stays plus literal steel rods means this does not breathe at all. It is so hot in this dress. <laughs> what have I done? Wow. I had a hunch that these are the easiest sleeves to make in the show. 
Mariah Reynolds sleeves are the hardest and Winter's Fall Eliza is the easiest. There's no lace, no dart, nothing. It does have a zipper that allows for the form-fittedness here in the wrist area, but that's easy beans. I would rather install that than the lace. Why are you the way that you are? didn't need a gusset to accommodate the classic work pose. This one I do think could have benefited from gussets, so if I ever make a dress with sleeves like this again, I will take that into account. The last time I made a skirt, I abided by the pattern, but this time I adhered to my Hail Mary lazy strategy, and that was whatever is left of the five yards by the end of the project, I will just use all of it. No scraps, no mess, no pattern, no problem. What? The first thing I made was the peplum, which gives the gown its personality. Here's the peplum from the front. I wanted to make sure that it matches up just about where this blue zone front meets the bottom um, and where it will meet the skirt. And that's where the peplum will be. And that's where the start of the cut on skirt will begin. The peplum needed to be approximately 11 inches long. It was stiffened with a light interfacing. If I made this again, I would have used a sturdier interfacing. Then I attached the skirt in a way that matched the pleats with the peplum. All of this was sewn to the lining layer of the bodice to hide any raw edges. was the part of the dress where I needed to start getting creative. I couldn't find any oval shaped belt buckles online, nor could I find any of these double layered buttons that I could cover with fabric. So I layered cardboard until I had the piece I wanted. Then I covered it in the silk and seriously hoped for the best. The belt buckle serves no functionality, just decorative. It's affixed to the bow detail and also stiffened with interfacing, and it just slides around and hangs on the belt ribbon where it can cover the hook and eye closure. I did the same thing for the double button here at the top of the bodice, and I am very glad that this detail is obscured by the lace. So yeah, beneath the $35 a yard silk is cardboard. That is about all. This is my favorite costume in the entirety of Hamilton. I hope you like this video. Please leave a like and a comment and subscribe. Here's a better look at the dress. Stay safe. Bye.